So Eric, stay here, and now we have Dr. Tracy Alloway on to talk about really the psychology of misdirection and what's happening with our minds, because obviously our little minds couldn't handle what was going on. <laughs> that was amazing. When Eric showed it to me earlier this week, I had the same response that you did, Eden. I just sort of <laughs> dropped everything. Oh my gosh, come on a little closer in, Tracy, so everyone gets to see you. So, all right, so how did he do that to us? Oh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> That's not the fun part. And in fact, studies show that when they ask people, do you want to know how they did the trick or do you want to see a new trick? The majority of people say, new trick, please. Yeah. So everyone at home, new trick, catch Eric and catch Dave and Busters. <laughs> well, okay, let's not hone in on that trick, though. Is there something going on in our minds mm -hmm. that makes it easy to fool people or is it just really magic and that's just the way it is? <laughs> it is magical, but our brain tricks us every single day. And one of the, the ways it does that is using something called inattentional blindness or change blindness. And think about when you're sitting in the car and your favorite song comes on the radio and you're thinking, I got to sing along to this and you're really into it and you miss the light turning green. That's a clear example of inattentional blindness, where we're so focused on one thing, we miss something else. It happens all the time in the scene. So let's say the background is changed to maybe instead of River City Live to News for Jax. Most of our viewers wouldn't notice that because their attention isn't focused on that. So sure. they have that blind spot there. Why is that? Why are we wired that way where we're hyper-focused on something, but it's almost like we lose some of our computer power in our brains yeah. to focus. Like, is there a reason? There is. If you touch the back of your right ear, that's your parietal lobe, and that's the ear responsible for concentration. And it is a limited space, so we can't concentrate on everything in our environment. And so our brain chooses, hey, I'm just going to focus on my song right now. I'm going to focus on the people talking right now. And so it blocks out or it doesn't attend to things around it. It has this blind spot as a result. Do you have any insight from the magician's perspective? Because he said something really uh, in state, or I don't even know the word I'm looking for, but it was just like, I'm looking at you to gauge your tells and that kind of thing. Yeah, the micro expressions is great, and I know a lot of magicians tend to use that as well. There's some science behind that too, that it's one of the better ways to identify lying behavior rather than uh, a polygraph, for example, which measures more your anxiety, and obviously you can control that. But a, a quick tip at home, if you want to see if someone is lying, is to look at the feet. If someone's feet, they're pointing towards you, then they're engaged. I'm looking at you guys, my feet are pointing here. But if you're having a conversation and their feet are turned away, you already know they're looking for a way out of that conversation even though their body may be facing yeah. you and they're nodding, they're thinking, where's that door? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this, Eric. Is there anything of uh, Dr. Alloway's studies or maybe other psychologists that have written about this that you've taken to heart when you do your tricks? Oh, absolutely. Or should I call them illusions? I know some uh, of the magicians... I'm going to go with there. magic. Yeah. 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 I don't want to... Definitely wanna... magic. Okay. <laughs> I don't okay no, I don't want to yeah. disrespect. It says... Magician underneath this. Definitely thing. no disrespect. You got like this little tennis. car trick so, on your yeah. I mean, Do you take into Wizard. account, do you kind of count on that with us? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to explain, but there is like a kind of this idea that she was saying that like that repetition, you hear the same song and you just kind of get hyper-focused in. Uh, there's a lot of repetition in my magic that then if I was to just randomly change something, you would hyper-focus in on that and be like, well, why did that just change? Like. He did the same thing a lot. It's about the same, you hear the same song a lot, and it just makes you kind of tune out in that direction of being like, oh, I love the song. And so the movement in that routine is designed around that same idea. Like, I worked for eight months on just that small routine alone in designing the movement to kind of not hypnotize you into sure. it, but like, but you to, know, yeah, lead you down that. this path that you think it's going one way, and then at the end, I'm like, I can hit you with something else. So. Tracy, you were talking, again, just like how we react, how our minds mm -hmm. work. Is there a way that we could, I guess, exercise or condition our minds to not fall for that? Not saying mm -hmm. with magic, but obviously like if you're out driving, mm -hmm. where you want to be aware of a lot of different things. Is there an exercise for that? Actually, it's better not to use an exercise for that because our brain is so efficient that it, it, it intentionally uses that mechanism. Another thing it does is expect something. So a great example in, from the magician world is the vanishing ball trick. You throw something up, you catch it, you throw something up. So your brain anticipates what's going to happen next, a little bit like what Eric was talking about. You do that five times, the magician doesn't throw anything up the sixth time and says, look, I made the ball vanish. And But your brain has already anticipated the ball is going to come back in the hand, and so it's wow. it's stupefied. But the thing is that a third of people will absolutely say, 
I saw that ball go up because your brain will insert that expectation sure. into reality and say, well, that's what is supposed to happen. So it definitely happened. Wow. <laughs> Tracy, you never cease to amaze. Really, you're, you're magical as well. And Tracy Alloway can be found at TracyAlloway.com. She's a, an author, a professor, and an all-around expert on everything we need her to be an expert on. That's right. Stick around. More to come right after this.